I love my plants at aquarium. It's very easy to take care of. The plants do so much of the work as far as keeping the water quality pristine because they absorb um, all of the uh, nitrates and phosphates out of the water. I do really enjoy this aquarium. However, there are a couple things about this tank that I don't like and I wanna change. One of those is that I wanna change out the filtration and the other thing is I wanna change out some of the plants. But before we make those changes, let's make another real important change. Okay, I'm back, as you can see, quite the change. I have to tell you, I had instant regret when I took those clippers to my face and kind of saw what was underneath. I don't know what I was expecting to see. I've lived with this face for 45 years, but I kind of felt uh, very strained. I didn't love it. But anyway, I'll get used to it or I'll grow a beard again. Probably grow a beard again, I don't know. But anyway, let's talk about the filtration. So in this aquarium, I was running a couple forms of filtration. I was running a wet dry sump underneath uh, down in the cabinet and I was also running some sponge filters that was hidden behind some plants and some wood here. Now because we have so many plants and because the plants are basically natural filtration they do a lot of the work that other filters would do normally. Um, in fact even more so. Um, I felt like the sump was kind of an overkill. The sump was there before when we, when we had the African cichlids in this tank. So a long time ago, uh, I had the Imbuna that are downstairs at my fish room. They were in this aquarium when they were growing out, as well as some peacocks were growing out in this tank. And at that time, the sump was very beneficial because it, it, it uh, added a lot of uh, filtering capacity, a lot of uh, biological area for the, um, the bacteria to grow. So that is no longer the case. We've got plants in there and I kept the sump running just because and uh, I just kind of felt like it was overkill. It was a little bit on the noisy side. This being next to the TV and a kind of a place where we sit and watch movies and shows and things like that. I didn't want that water cascading out of the overflow um, and even though I did kind of build a silencer for it, it still made a little ripple of a sound and I didn't want that here. It's fine in the other tanks. Um, in the other room because that's kind of where we sit and kind of relax and we'd like to have that water sound but here we didn't want that the other reason is that uh, it was a challenge keeping things from floating through the skimmer and uh, going down the overflow into the sump mainly my amano shrimp so even though i would kind of build little barriers so that the that the amano shrimp couldn't get past them they still would manage to get through the uh, overflow and would uh, take a ride down into the sump and then I would have to catch them, fish them out and put them back in every once in a while. And some didn't make it. Sometimes they might get caught in the filter and filter media, they may get caught in the uh, bio balls and so they wouldn't survive. So I just eliminated it. I was uh, basically just spent like a third of a day uh, taking everything apart and um, just running a sponge filter. So we, ha we had before here, uh, on here we had uh, some aquarium cobalt sponge filters that I still have in there and I have the three nano ones because they're very narrow and I have them stacked up uh, three in a row and then we've got the never clock airstone in there so that has been running that hasn't changed and then additionally what I did is I took another uh, medium size aquarium co-op sponge filter and stuck it in the other corner so we had the sponge filter existing so we had some existing filtration and then I took a, um, a filter from down in the fish room that was already seeded with beneficial bacteria, had already been established and plopped it in here and uh, just connected it to the uh, air pump. So now we have a sponge filter on both sides. Um, I did move the CO2 to the other side as well, just so that it, uh, it just kind of flows a little bit better, looks a little bit better. And then we also have a power head in there that has a sponge pre-filter. So essentially it's like another sponge filter that's driven by a power head. So, um, plenty of filtration, plenty of water movement, plenty of oxygenation for this aquarium. The sump just wasn't needed. Now for those of you that know me, you know that I love sumps. Sumps are probably my favorite form of filtration for numerous reasons. Uh, you can stack a lot of media in there to have lots of um, 
biological filtration, mechanical filtration. Uh, you can put things in there that will aid in chemical, fil chemical filtration. So a lot of versatility with the sump. You can also put things like the heater in the sump if you want to. You can put the CO2, CO2 diffuser in there. Other forms of equipment that you don't want shown in the tank, you can hide that in the sump. It does aid in the oxygenation if it's a wet dry situation and also does aid in adding a little bit of water volume depending on the size of the sump. So if you have, let's say a 55 gallon aquarium and you have a 30 gallon sump underneath and maybe there's 20 gallons worth of water in that sump, instead of having a 55 gallon aquarium, you essentially have 75 gallons worth of water volume. So it does help in a lot of different cases but because of the reasons that I mentioned, it just didn't work out for me with this aquarium. However, that sump did not go to waste. I actually moved it to the Malawi tank and I took the Malawi sump out where I had a, a custom, not custom, I made it. It was just, you know, me siliconing in some, uh, some plastic or some whatever it was, acrylic panels into um, a 20 gallon aquarium and I made some baffles that I made a sump many years ago and it worked fine. It was very, very functional um, as far as filtration, but very hard to service because of how I built it and how it was sitting. It was also acting as kind of a refugium. We had a big pothos plant growing down there and uh, it was just very hard to manage and maintain. So um, ended up uh, putting this wonderful wet dry sump in the Malawi system and was able to take a lot of that media that was existing already in that other sump and pack it in this new sump. So that thing is packed solid from top to bottom. So there's uh, mechanical filtration with filter floss. There's a sponge pad underneath one of the coarse sponge pads from um, Aquarium Co-op. Then we've got all of the uh, wet dry um, bio balls. And then underneath that we have more of the uh, Aquarium Co-op sponge um, filter pads. And then we have the very large, dense uh, filter foam in there um, from the sump. And then we also have some other pot scrubbers and stuff like that stuffed in the other side of the, uh, in the other side of the sump so that I can use those for any kind of uh, situation where I just need to set up a quick tank. I can throw those, uh, those pot scrubbers and like to hang on the back and have another tank ready to go. So anyway, um, that tank is doing fine. The filtration is, uh, is running perfectly. I don't have the refugium set up over there anymore, so I just took the pothos and hung it over the back. But uh, anyway, that's the filtration. It's probably a lot longer than I care to talk about with the filtration, but it was quite the project. I probably spent a total of about a day between the two tanks um, making all those changes. So the other thing that we're gonna address is we're gonna address the plants. So originally when I had this uh, tanker and when I set it up um, a couple of years ago now as a planted tank, I wanted to have kind of a front area of the aquarium have some carpeting plants. And because I was new to doing kind of a higher tech aquarium with high lights and CO2, I wanted to pick something easy that uh, would be easy for me to maintain. And so I picked S Repens. Now, the problem with the S Repens, and they were, the, the plants were just fine, is that it did require a little bit of maintenance. It requires you to kind of trim and keep them short and shrub like. Um, otherwise they kind of grow taller and get skinny and strangly and that's what happened. I didn't pay a lot of attention. As you guys know, I've got a lot of other things going on and I kind of let it go and the s repens never really took to creating that carpet situation. For a time it was looking okay when it was, you know, when it had a lot in there and it was kind of bushy, but uh, through a series of events it kind of thinned out and got scraggly and I think I'm just gonna change it out. Well, I know I'm gonna change it out because the plants that uh, I ordered are uh, arriving today. So we are gonna switch that out, put a new type of carpet in there. I'm gonna take all the S-Reppins out. I'll probably just stick it in another tank, let them float and uh, figure out where to uh, plant them. And then uh, we're gonna put in the new carpeting plants. Lesson number one, when opening a package on the internet, Remove your address, that way people don't know where you live or where you get your mail at least, if you don't want them to know.
Okay, so what I did is I got some Monte Carlo. Monte Carlo is uh, kind of a smaller uh, carpeting foreground plant. Um, it would be similar to like Baby Tears or Dwarf Baby Tears, but uh, from everything that I've read and uh, learned about, it's a little bit easier to take care of. So what I'm gonna do is I've got four um, little pots of uh, the uh, Monte Carlo and I'm going to place them in the foreground and let them um, kind of grow out and create a carpet. So this time, knowing that I made a mistake the first time, I'm gonna be a little bit more diligent about uh, upkeep and doing some trimming. Um, I do know that this stuff can grow pretty rapidly. Uh, when I was at uh, 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 Aquapro's house, uh, Mike up in, uh, you guys know Aquapro's, when I was up at his house looking at his uh, giant uh, tank with the trees that he made, um, and I'll put a link of that video up here, but uh, those were Monte Carlo trees essentially. So um, anyway, I am going to uh, put these uh, Monte Carlo in and uh, hopefully get this carpet started. Um, and I'm really looking forward to actually having a carpet this time instead of just some sporadic s rep. And so uh, I also got a bunch of fertilizers. I got some root tabs. I got uh, some more of the Aquarium Co-op um, Easy Green. Now normally it would come in these smaller bottles like these and they come with a little pump head. So every time you uh, squeeze the pump head, that doses for 10 gallons. So one, two, three, four, five, six would be 60 gallons as an example. Um, but because I am starting to get more plants and using them in multiple tanks, um, I needed more and I found that I was going through the Easy Green a little bit faster than I, than I realized I would be. So I got the big uh, refillable um, container here. This is, uh, I forgot what this is. This is uh, a liter or something like that. Yeah, it's a, a liter. So uh, anyway, that is uh, what I got going on. I got some other stuff. I got some airline tubing. And I got root tabs. So root tabs are gonna be good for some of the plants that um, need to get nutrients from their roots. Um, I've got a uh, Pondagetan in there that um, is lacking a little bit. So I'll stick some root tabs in there, but I also want to use the root tabs down below in the mangrove tank. So uh, anyway, comment down below if you have had experience with Monte Carlo. Uh, tell me what you think about my changing away, going away from my favorite filter, the sump, and just going with the sponge filters. And um, yeah, just let me know what you think. I do want to say that I do love sponge filters very much and I've made videos about why I love sponge, sponge filters so much. So um, I think they will do just fine in here. So uh, anyway, that's all I had for now. Hopefully you enjoyed the little fun that we had uh, with me shaving off the beard. I was growing the beard for 77 days. Uh, I last shaved um, right before the shelter in place and uh, I just figured it was time for a change. I've, I've uh, mentioned this, or actually I posted a video on Instagram, uh, in my Instagram stories. So if you are following me on Instagram, which you should be, then you already know that I, um, you know, was going through this. But uh, anyway, some people were all already commenting and sending me messages that they, they thought I was better off with the beard. But uh, anyway, it's just the beard. I can grow it back very quickly. So uh, anyway, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. But before we make that change, let's make another quick one. No, I don't like that. And take two.